Hey everyone, Kaylee, your friendly neighborhood hairstylist with Anna Laura. And we're gonna do a 30 day update on Anna's curly hair journey. Yay! About a month ago, we did a video where we decided to just try some stuff we'd seen on TikTok and around YouTube to see if we could coax a wave or a curl out of your hair. If you haven't seen that video, I'm gonna need you to pause this and go watch that and then come back. Oh my gosh, I've learned so much since then. I it's know. ridiculous. <laughs> we said in that video that the goal would be that we would look back and face palm and uh. I definitely I did look back that. in Facebook. Yeah. So I do think before we even get into this, we should acknowledge that um, curly hair has not always been like an accepted beauty standard, which is yeah. wrong. Like obviously wrong. We should embrace all hair types. Absolutely. And I'm gonna focus on the good side now that like we're accepting things. And I also really want to shout out all the amazing curly girls over the years that have learned how to style their curls and are now teaching us, especially black women and women of color have been doing this for a really long time. We've learned lots of tips and tricks from them. Mm -hmm. And I don't think we can do a curly hair journey without at least giving a shout out Absolutely not. to all the knowledge we have from yeah. them. So thank you very much. And uh, I feel like we should just get into talking about all this, yeah? All right, okay. yeah, let's do it. Let's let you take that away, Anna. I, I'm basically here to listen and like get <laughs> feedback at this point. Uh, yeah, so I guess to start off with, I do want to address that I didn't do the curly girl method. Like to the T, there's a lot of rules. Or it's a very, big overarching concept. So I do want to talk about what I did. What I did was completely cut out heat for 30 days. I did not use any shampoos with parabens or sulfates. I really just focused on like nourishing and moisturizing my hair. If I refer to this as my curly journey, that is what I'm talking about. Before this, I was doing a lot of heat styling. Sorry. <laughs> I pretty much never wore my hair actually natural. I looked a long time in my photo roll to see if I could find a picture of my hair completely natural and I couldn't find it at all because if I did wear it natural, I probably wasn't taking a photo of it because I wasn't really celebrating it. And mm -hmm. I think that's the biggest thing that I wanted to change on this 30 day process. Yeah, you went through that similar to the reason that I did with like the whole like lockdown thing happening and all of a sudden you weren't doing hair and makeup for like other people. Yeah, exactly. And I think you definitely touched that in that um, video. Was it your self care routine? Yeah. That was okay, I know that that title is like out of the <laughs> ordinary for me, but I opened up a lot about like my mental health yeah. and what that's been like for yeah. me. And I really, really liked that video. Yeah. If you haven't seen it, I mean. You definitely should click on that link. Cause she, I mean, all her years of therapy paid off in that video. <laughs> I, I felt therapized. <laughs> I was seen, I was heard, it was great, <laughs> it moved me. But yeah, it's very similar to that. I think you went through it a lot more in makeup and mm -hmm. I went through it a lot more in hair where I realized this um, pattern of kind of doing my hair all for this like one specific look. Like I would do it because mm. I was going somewhere. Yeah. I would do it to look a certain way and it wasn't necessarily about what my hair actually wanted to be doing or what my hair yeah. needed. And so, yeah, I think all of this really came from me wanting to celebrate whatever natural texture I can find. And, you know, starting this off, I had no idea if my hair was going to, you know, spring up and be curly all of a sudden or if it was going to just be like, but it's kind of cool because I think in the makeup video that we posted last week I was talking mm -hmm. about how my makeup went from like blanking my face out and then mm -hmm. painting another one over it yeah to actually celebrating my features yes. and yours kind of went from like blanking out your hair's yeah. texture to embracing it absolutely that's pretty cool wow I've chilled that's so weird <laughs> oh, look, I literally do that's so crazy Whoa. that's awesome though yeah so let's talk about how it went for you yeah all right so I'm gonna break this down into like four four week increments because we do not need to go into all 30 days. I did keep track of it pretty much day by day and it wow. is a lot that of information. That is dedication. <laughs> to save us all like five hours of me talking to you about my hair. This is a seminar on every hair on my head. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna break it down into the weeks. Okay. So starting off with week one. Week one, day one. You oh guys have already seen gosh. it. <laughs> if you haven't seen it, click above. We'll link that. It is a video of what not to do. <laughs> So here was my process around it was like, I'm not super educated on curly hair. Right. Said that in that video. Yeah. I have become so much more educated throughout mm -hmm. the course of this journey. I'm super proud and happy with that. Right. But because I was coming from like a non-expert place, I thought it would be interesting to like, 
I watched a few videos. Mm-hmm. I probably consumed about an hour of content, and then I was like, right. this is what I learned from that hour. Let's see what happens. Right. And I feel like that's probably really normal. Right. So I like that we had that kind of like fall on our face moment, but it yeah. was a little bit of a fall on our face it, moment. It definitely <laughs> was. Looking back at it, like you guys are talking about like cringing with how dry my hair was and I was brushing it out. I'm right there with you now, believe me. Yep. It was definitely a face palm moment. So that went straight into a week of like trying to figure out how to apply all the comments that I got, which were amazing, by yeah. the way. Biggest tool of my journey by far. If was... you are going through a curly hair journey, I would just read the comments, like screen yeah. cap the ones that are applicable. It's a very, very good comment It section. is, it, it was great. But you guys were really there for me that first week. Let Aww. me tell you, people were DMing me tips and tricks and helping me out and it was, it was really a lot of information to consume in that first week. So. I think my biggest struggle through that week was figuring out how to wake up with any sort of curl in my hair. <laughs> Y'all saw me earlier today doing the video with Kaylee, so getting my curls in. All that's happened since then is I went on a few walks with my dogs. It was like 95 degrees outside, so I had to throw it up. So I feel like I kind of like messed up some of this. This is the curls after the end of day one. Still definitely there. All right, I'm just going to keep things very loose and try not to disturb any of this beautiful shape. I think I should probably be using like a silk or like fluffy scrunchie or something for this. All right, it's a learning process. We're learning as we go. Now I've learned that it's a much different process for trying to maintain these natural curls. So pretty much on day two, after I read all of those comments, I wanted to like pretty much start over. You but did, I remember that. Yeah, I like fully wet my hair all over again. It started with just like spraying it and it ended up being sopping wet to the point I had to plop all over again. But I just like was getting so much good information. I was like, oh, I've got to do it right away. Um, and I'm usually a wash my hair once, maybe twice a week kind of gal, so re-wetting it that much, that quickly, was already so far out of the normal for me. Taking out my plop. Oh my gosh, I'm probably taking out the plop. Yeah, it's been a minute. Let's see how it looks. Hopefully it looks fine to just go in, because that's what I'm doing. Oh! Honey! She is curly. Yeah. So we're gonna go with the um, air dry method right now, because I gotta go. We're done with work, so we're rolling out. All right. So this is the final result of just air drying. And it really worked out. I'm shocked. And I think the rest of that week, I pretty much like almost entirely re-wet my hair every day that week, wow. trying to figure out how to refresh the curls in a way that made sense, but mm -hmm. also, I was trying to use all of y'all's tips and tricks. So the first week was kind of a cluster mess. <laughs> I don't know, it was it was a lot of information, a lot of me trying stuff out. Another thing that I changed up a lot that first week was figuring out how to sleep mm. with my curls. That was a big one. I tried silk pillowcase, which I love. Well, I will always continue to sleep on a silk pillowcase. You guys recommended pineappling, which was I had to look it up. Yeah, you do a shin yong on the kind of like a unicorn shin yong with a really loose silk scrunchie, which shout out to Kaylee. That was one of the gifts she showered me with on this <laughs> curly hair journey. I didn't super love that because I'm a tummy sleeper. I know it's bad for me. Don't come for me in the comments. And I also have like really long hair, so that tail was really long. It didn't mm. work for me, but I know it works for a lot of people. So then I tried the silk turban. That worked out super well, actually. By the silk, do you mean like a bonnet kind of thing? Is that what it's called? Yeah, it's kind of like a bonnet. <laughs> yeah, so on the outside, it's like a normal material on the inside. It's like silky. Yeah. So I used that and it worked super well. It kept the frizz down. It was great. I just genuinely couldn't sleep with it on. It made me feel hot and claustrophobic and I was freaking out. So <laughs> not a match for me, but it did help with the whole like frizz control yeah, thing. Yeah, I know. I think uh, Swayze uses one. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, gold. She's my girl now. Maybe We're, I don't know her yet, but she's my girl. <laughs> she's so cool. And then what I landed on eventually was a loose braid, but that was actually kind of later on in the in the journey. In but the that journey. was that's my whole sleep situation. Sweet one is a mess. <laughs> Week one is crazy. <laughs> Week one is a lot of information, a lot of experimentation. And throwing everything at the wall. And nothing was working. <laughs> How did week two go? <laughs> now, unsurprisingly, <laughs> week one was like all of the information, which led into a just a really big meltdown of week oh, two. Oh no! I kind of knew it was gonna be a rough day because my hair already started out pretty crazy, um, but it ended up getting just so poofy and frizzy that I had to put it up, and I ended up having a ponytail all day. And then um, 
this is it now. I'm really having a hard time not comparing my hair to other people because I've you know, I've been spending so much time researching like the right ways to do things and I'm, I don't know, I feel like everybody else's curls just look so much better and mine look good like right away but then the second they have any kind of like adversity, any sort of like heat or humidity, I just feel like they're spazzing out and then it's just really fluffy and frizzy and then I'm not supposed to brush my hair and it feels like it's just all like one big mat. I really felt super sad after I put in the work to like re-wet my hair yesterday and I ended up even like diffusing it and everything, um, putting a little more gel in it, diffusing it and it looked pretty when I left for work and then it just like as the day went on I guess it dried and it got fluffier and frizzier and then even in a ponytail it just looked super bad so I was not in the place to like video or anything because I was really annoyed and like kind of disappointed um that I had put in that work and then it just looked really frizzy and stuff but they're like really like tangly and frizzy pieces just are like giving me anxiety I like to be able to run my hands through my hair and then realizing like that's not doable when you have curly hair which I'm sure it's just something I'll get used to it. And okay, I'm I'm done complaining. It's fine. Everything's fine. I'm gonna go ahead and get this wet and give it another shot. I think this is the moment where I was just like, I was spending probably like two hours a day on my hair, completely rewetting it, completely trying again. I was super focused on trying to make my hair look like all of the videos I was watching of like people giving instructional and very helpful tips. Yeah. I think I was just focused on the wrong thing. I was focused on trying to get my hair to look like theirs. Mm. And I was putting in hours and hours of work and I didn't feel like my hair was giving me that instant gratification of like, it's looking better, keep it up. It yeah. was like, it looks worse every time you wake oh, up. Oh no. It's like the transition phase too as mm -hmm. well. Yeah. I mean, I've not experienced it, but I've heard people talk about it when you try to like start teaching your curls. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, what's going on? I don't know how to do what you're telling me to do. Uh, so from my side, I hear that you were trying like new different stuff every single day and that kind yes. of overwhelming. Yeah, it, it did. So what'd you do for week two? So then basically that was like on the, at the very beginning of week two, I just kind of like, you know, week one I was soaring and then week two I crashed. Oh no. And then I was like, well, I've committed to the internet that I'm going to do this for 30 days. So I've got to pick myself up somehow. <laughs> And I was like, all right, I'm just gonna shift my focus and I'm gonna focus on making some goals that I know I can do. Mm. That was super helpful and I encourage a lot of you guys, a lot of you, a lot of you guys encouraged me that week through like DMs and Instagram. They're like, don't give up, it's gonna be frustrating at first. And that was super helpful. And like I reiterate to anybody who's wanting to go through this, like just like push through that first few weeks and just try to incorporate some really tangible things moving forward. And so what I decided to focus on was only detangling my hair while wet. Mm -hmm. You guys really came for me in the comments <laughs> on that and I appreciate it, um, like soaking wet. And I think overall, like that was like the biggest thing for me going from what you guys saw on week one to week two was just like soaking and saturating my hair. That was including when I was plopping it, making sure it was still like sopping wet at that point. I was used to very much like towel drying and squishing it out before. And then after like pulling out the plop, I would love to see the curls and so I'd start scrunching them just to like give them a little life. But then I, I figured out that that was really breaking up my clumped curls. Mm. So I decided to cut that out and then I started using the pixie diffuse technique. So in the first video, you guys saw me do like the hover diffuse, which for me made my hair super frizzy and so the pixie is you pick all of the hair up with the dryer not on, then you turn it on when your hair is mm. up in the claw. And then you turn it off and then you take it down. That makes so much sense. And that was one of the goals that we kind of talked about overall was like finding ways to get clumpy curls. Right. And I think we got that from INGE curls on Instagram, or at least yes. that was one girl that I followed a lot for yes. that information. So if you guys yeah. want to know more about like clumpy versus not as clumpy curls. Which is funny because one of the sides of my hair has like taken to the clump method and one of them is like still in this like scrunchy method. So you can see the difference on my head right now. <laughs> You're beautiful in your own way. So let me just like walk you through really quick my routine at this point, okay? okay. And I'll update you as I go. So week two routine, I guess it's gonna shoot right over Kaylee. Bye. <laughs> so at this point I'm washing my hair every two to three days. I shampoo it at the roots. 
I put in conditioner only at the ends and then I was um, detangling with that conditioner really soaked in there. Then you were doing the squish to condition life. Mm, that was the addition of week two. That, yeah, that was like, okay, I'm gonna start applying my conditioner this way. Mm. So squish to condition is you get all your conditioner in there and then you pick your hair up and really just like, you grab onto it and it makes this really like, noise. The second you feel it, you'll know what it's talking about. It's saturated with water, saturated with the conditioner, and you're just, it gets in there. All right. So squish to condition. Then I was rinsing that out and plopping. Then after my plop, I put in leave-in conditioner, curl cream, mm -hmm. then gel. And then I did my pixie diffuse. And if the cast was really strong, I used oil to break it up, but I really wasn't using that intense of gel. Mm -hmm. It wasn't it wasn't creating that like super firm cast like I saw in a lot of other people's videos. So I ended up kind of leaning more towards the oil to like mm. reduce frizz. Yeah, I have a friend of mine that actually has really fine hair mm -hmm. and does a little bit more of a cast. And so instead of using like an oil oil, she uses like a spray like dry conditioner, oh. which is really just a spray oil. Yeah. And it helps to remove the cast without right. like weighing your hair down at all. Mm. It's kind of good for like a medium to light cast. Right. Um, cast being like the hardened gel. So yeah, for finer hair that can work super, super well. Yeah, good note. This week I was trying out the pineappling technique. Um, I gave it a long shot, but it just, you know. Just no. Nah. Just it wasn't for me, but that's what I was doing. And then after my workouts in the morning, I would take a body shower and then just re-wet my curls. At this point, it still was quite a bit of re-wetting wow. and diffusing. Wow. Um, or I just gave it a little break for the day and wrapped it up in a little bun. Mm. But that's okay. I really did, like, I had to compare it to when I was heat styling my hair, I did not have bomb hair every single day. That's true. So me having that expectation. You have beautiful hair, but yeah. <laughs> having that expectation of like, every day my curls are gonna be just like fire. It's a bit of a stretch. Yeah. I don't know anybody whose hair looks amazing no. every day. I mean, what? I mean, <laughs> she's probably the closest to it. All right, so that brings us to week three. three. Where you feeling more confident, yes. feeling better. At that point, I'd taken off some of that stress. Like mm -hmm. I said, I addressed the fact that, you know, my hair doesn't have to be full out every single day. Right. And I was giving myself some space to just breathe with it, which was very helpful. Yeah. I started to see some curls naturally forming up here at the top, which you I can remember. see now. Yeah, like I remember seeing those for the first time and I got so excited. Yes, me too. And like, that was like, honestly, the first little bit of gratification that I got from this whole journey of like, okay, it's paying off, it's worth it. Yeah. And guys, that was three weeks in it's that I started to see anything but that's a long okay, time you're right it's not that bad okay it's a long time when you're in it i guess what i mean is sometimes people talk about their transition period and it's mm. like six months a year yeah. a year and a half i see those pictures where it's like two years into the curly hair journey yeah. and i'm like i don't know if i can commit to something for two years like that i do still think that this is a very big journey and like seeing like the littlest bit of curl at three weeks yes that was that was good to be able to see that but if you're, but, if you're talking about those big pictures, they've seen curl at the root, they've seen curl through the end, they've seen like clumps yeah. forming on their own. Like, oh man. I know, the dream. <laughs> <laughs> so my week three updated routine, at this point I was washing my hair every three to four days, which is good, starting to stretch out that time. Mm -hmm. um, I was doing a deep conditioning max on one of those. Okay. So this in the whole week. One had a deep conditioning mask, one was just regular in the shower. I added in doing my leave-in conditioner at the end of my shower instead mm. of after my plop, which actually helped a lot in the curl clumping endeavors. I think it really helped to sit in that microfiber towel with the conditioner on it. Oh, I could see that. It would at least help with like frizz and stuff yes. too. And like lock in the moisture, yeah. all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I do have to say, I like, I did a couple days where I tried to like enhance my natural She did, curl. I have videos of it. <laughs> it's so cute. Kaylee, would you like to show the camera your hair? Hi. So today was just Pete Kaylee. She fully fell into FOMO for my curly girl method yesterday. I did. And once she saw that she had some waves, she decided to figure out how to get the waves. Yeah, well, okay. This section right here, this, not heat styled. It actually worked out pretty well, but I noticed for myself the squish to condition kind of thing, mm -hmm. really wet conditioner applications. Yes. That was the stuff that I 
immediately could see. My waves would go from being like really stretched out, mm-hmm. like maybe in the two category, but more like a one C <laughs> to like definitely like in the twos. Yeah. And I was like, okay. Like, so that's that's what I can connect with yes. on that is like the conditioning and the squishing and yes. the water, it's key. Yeah. And like way more water than you've ever used in your life if you were like me before this. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> like I've never, I was like, yep, I have to get it wet enough to wash it. But like that was pretty much it. Other than that, I was ready for it to be dry and petrified with heat. Yeah. But now we love water. <laughs> Anna has her notes up over oh, here. Yeah. I'm looking at this picture from week three and that was, I remember this day. This felt like climbing a mountain. Yeah. In the sense that like your curls took on their own. Mm-hmm. It wasn't as much like elbow grease trying right. to get it there. I do feel like it seems as though, this is the the first analogy that's popping into my mind where I was talking about when I was doing laser hair removal, I had yeah. to be so careful on every area because right. there were so many hairs. Mm-hmm. And now that there's not as many hairs, I can just <laughs> through it. Right. It's like when your hair wasn't trained yet mm-hmm. and you didn't know what worked for your hair yet, it took so long. Yeah. And this was the first time where we saw your hair starting to kind of like it, yes. and do its own thing. Yeah, for sure. And I think, you know, at this point I was like, what, seven or eight showers in. And once you do start doing all those steps, it starts becoming more second nature. Mm -hmm. So definitely this was a very big week for me. It was starting to really click, starting to make sense. After I would take down my plop and apply my cream and my gel, I was adding a little extra water in again Mm. at this point, which that was definitely a new addition. Because before that I had been thinking like, you know, the plop is to kind of dry it out Mm -hmm. and we take it down. But I noticed with doing that extra little spritz of water on some of the pieces that weren't clumping as well, it really helped them Ooh, in the long run. Okay. So. And then at that point, I was also sleeping in a loose braid overnight with a soap scrunchie on the end, and that is what works for my hair. It, it takes no time to put it in, which is important for me because I already have a long nighttime routine. She loves her skincare routine. <laughs> That's the one I landed on, but try everything. Everybody's different. All right, so that brings us to week four. So at this point, like I said, I was really feeling very natural. I was feeling a lot more like in a groove of it. The biggest thing that changed about this is I pushed it to a week shower. So mm. I've only I've only been doing that showering wash day once a week and it's really been fine. I feel like my roots get way less oily now than they did when I heat styled huh. them. So that's really interesting. I don't know if that's a that's a thing for everybody, but it's definitely been something for me. Let us know in the comments. Yeah, let me know. And then The refresh of my curls at that halfway point though, I really did wet them a good bit and then I put in leave-in conditioner Mm. in. And I kind of had that moment where I was like, I wasn't fully washing my scalp, but like that was definitely at that like midway point, I needed to put in a little extra love. So Mm. leave-in conditioner, then maybe a little more gel if it it needed it. Yeah, it was really stretching out that time between the washes, but. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. That's it. I've kind of stuck with the same routine. I know there's a lot more I could add in, but to, to prevent the colossal breakdown happening again, I was like, all right, I'm going to just stick to... Just going to focus. Focus on this plan, introduce small things at a time, and, and really master it. And moving forward, there's so much time to like try different products and techniques and things like that, but I really wanted to focus in on this 30 days of just... Yeah seeing what my hair could do. All right, so at the end of all of that, yeah, how do you summarize 30 days? I think all in all, I'm very glad that I did this. I think it was really good, both like for my mental state and also for my hair. I think it was good to take that break and really take it down a notch and embrace the natural texture of my hair. I'm super glad that I did like actually commit to it on you know your channel and on my social media and everything because honestly, without that, I think I would have just Stopped at a two week mark. (laughs) It really was like super overwhelming at that point. Because you just ran in so hard. Yeah. 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 That makes sense. And I feel like that's really normal if you're trying something new and it feels like, okay, if I if I nail all of these, if I stick the landing, Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go from zero to sixty. And that's really not how it works. It's not. And it's it is scary trying something new. And like, you know, my entire life I've only been a shower and some hot tools away from bomb hair and all of a sudden there's so many variables <laughs> and I have no idea what my hair is gonna look like. Yeah. Really just like pushing past feeling uncomfortable has has been really good for just like my mental health in general. Oh, so good. I really encourage you guys to do it. It was a lot of work, but I mean when it comes to your hair, why not? When it comes to being in quarantine, why not? Like this yeah. is a great time to to try it. Yeah. And I also have other people in my life that are going on their yeah. own like, you know, natural hair journey and 
I found that not everybody rushes in so hard so fast. Right. So not everybody has that point of exhaustion. Yeah. I love that about you. So yeah. I have zero problem with it. I just want to like throw that out there. You know, you find your routine and you work with it and you can modify it slightly. Right. The funny thing is with curly hair is that you think because you're doing your natural texture that it's going to take less time. Right. No, no, Not no. Not necessarily. No. But you do also have the benefit of embracing your natural hair texture, which is really beautiful. Yeah. And it feels a little bit rebellious still. It does. And I kind of love that for you. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I do remember somebody commented on that very first video and was like, 30 days? What do you expect to see me see in 30 days? And when I read that, I was like, 30 days is a lifetime. What are you <laughs> talking about? 30 days of changing my hair? I'm going to be a new woman. But I do see now in the big picture of the journey of embracing your curly hair. Like, as far as results go, you're not gonna see that in just the 30 days. Like, I've seen some, but I know that if I did keep at this in a few years, that's when really, like, it really would start to click. Mm -hmm. It does but look good now, though. I'm really loving it now. It's really pretty. It looks healthy and shiny and happy. So, all that said, what's your plan moving on? Oh. <laughs> Loaded question. I think that I really want to hold on to the things that I've liked throughout this process and really continue to embrace my natural texture and celebrating that and not feeling like I always have to heat style it. But I do want to kind of loosen the grip a little bit. I'm gonna look for a, a nice in between. I don't think I'm, I'm gonna go like as intense as these past 30 days were for like the next two years. Yeah. But I do definitely want to spend a lot of the time in my natural hair. Yeah. And I'm excited for that. Like, I liked getting to do a video with you in your natural hair. I think a lot of people liked it in the comments too. Yeah. yeah. So that's exciting. I'm glad that you're gonna keep doing some more of this because, like, this is really cool. It's been really cool for me to watch. I feel like I've learned a lot. So thanks for being my guinea pig. Of course. Slash taking all the initiative and doing all the work. <laughs> if you guys are thinking about doing it, seriously, we'll leave some resources down below. Really big advice for you guys is to find someone with similar hair textures as yours because that is going to be the most yeah. beneficial. Like, there's such a spectrum and yeah, there's knowledge to be learned all the way along, but like start with someone who's exactly like your hair texture yeah. if you can. Yeah. From there, world's your oyster. Do yeah. whatever you want. Retweet. Alrighty, so that has been 30 days of your curly slash wavy hair journey. I guess we have to admit like this is waves. Yes. Technically not curls. It is but, like- well, Waves are a curl pattern. I but, know. But yes. I know. I'm not, I'm not saying that I am curly. I am on a wavy journey. Yeah, which we love. Yes. Alrighty, well, that has been the update. If you have questions for Anna Laura, you can put them in the comments. I'll like let you take over the account and answer back to people. Oh, this will be fun. Yeah, let me know any questions you got below or any more advice you have on me going forward now that you've heard all of the tea about my hairs on my head. Yeah. <laughs> but I think that is it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, please hit that like button. It helps to support the channel. And if you're new here, click that subscribe button to join the Bradaholic family here, here on Kaylee, Kaylee Melissa. Melissa. And all of y'all can hit that bell icon to be notified every, every time, time we post a new video. video. And that's it for today. Whether you're old or new or a casual lurker, thank you for spending time with us. And, and we'll, we'll see you in the next video. video. Mwah. Bye. Bye. Hold on, I lost a braid. Oh no. She's been exposed. This side really performed very well today. <laughs> Thanks, hair. Uncomfortability. Is that a word? Yeah, sure.